So I'll talk about the public invention oxygen concentrator next. And so we recognize that with all these ventilator projects that we needed to address uh, the oxygen shortage, which you, you might have heard of in the news recently uh, with some of these hospitals in, in Los Angeles and um, basically the, the high flow oxygen um, therapies are really uh, pushing the, the um, systems to the limits in the hospitals. And um, it's become a big problem now all across the world. Um, so the initial idea was born out of the need to deploy oxygen to um, low resource countries like Africa and, and South America, where it's, oxygen has been a problem for many years and things like um, pneumonia and especially in uh, infants. Um, so I really wanted to make something that could be made locally uh, in a workshop. So I actually set up my garage to be a workshop um, that just has some basic tools uh, and everything that can be made out of, um, you know, with a mill, uh, a mill drill, a lathe and some hand tools and things. So we focused a lot around low voltage um, power requirements. It is at 24 volts at the moment, but I want to get that down to 12 so we can run off, you know, car batteries and we're not pushing the uh, electrical infrastructure, uh, which, which is normally quite underdeveloped. Um, so the initial design, design was just on some three inch aluminium tubing and, and some aluminium plates. So all sort of standard dimensions. So it's not difficult to get hold of. Um, it's based on a, a standard sort of pressure swing absorption process, which was developed in the 1970s. So it's, um, you know, we're not really running into any patent troubles and things like that. Uh, the real invention is creating something open source that can be replicated and um, and and is um, accurate in, in how it's producing the oxygen, which is the biggest challenge because it's quite a, um, a fine balance. So this is the first prototype here um, that we've got running. And you can see it's sort of the design has evolved a little bit over time. And I started to look at um, intercoolers and you know maybe reducing the number of valves as, as time has gone on. So I'll just show this quickly. So this was producing 94% um, oxygen. This is the Ventmon, which I used to, to measure the oxygen and, and made a little adapter. So it's not particularly exciting, but it's um, that was the machine in operation. So quickly um, from that first prototype, we've been looking at different problems that uh, have been found. So I'll go through these briefly. And, and one of them is the air um, treatment. So we need um, high quality. Um, the end goal is to produce medical grade oxygen, which is has got some very high requirements. Um, so we need to produce very dry air. We need to get all the water out, the oil out. Um, it could be, you know, air pollution uh, as well. So that's just the first stage before we then separate the, um, the oxygen and the nitrogen. Um, so the water is a big problem and we've just got a, a pretty standard um, SMC filter which you can see the amount of water. This is just after maybe an hour of running. Um, and particularly in, in challenging environments, we might have very high humidities, very high temperatures and, and dust. You know, these are sort of pretty um, fundamental engineering challenges. Uh, this is a simple sort of intercooler that I made just out of, it's three feet of copper pipe and a fan. And you can see here, there's little droplets of water. So there's still water uh, in the air, even after the first filter. Uh, so this is a low maintenance design and we may also need sort of a desiccant dryer, uh, but that requires, you know, um, consumable parts and things, which is, is not ideal. 
So the cylinder design and construction, uh, as I mentioned before, this can be all made in a workshop. This entire um, pressure vessel was made by hand. Uh, so this is made with a hacksaw and just sanded. Um, and this is all made um, with a hand drill and everything. So sort of demonstrating proof of concept that we can make these basically anywhere in the world. Um, just the interior of the sieve. So these are sort of the secret source in these is the, the sieves. And these are uh, zeolite beads, which um, basically attract the nitrogen um, more strongly than the oxygen so that um, the oxygen passes through before the nitrogen gets there. So that's sort of the trick. Um, but these also love to attract other things like water. Um, so that's why we need to prepare um, the air before anything, uh, before we separate the nitrogen and oxygen. So we're looking at different um, arrangements here. So the first um, foam filters, you can see some issues like um, where we've got the, the air jetting through. And then I made a second um, type of filter, which is stainless steel mesh and a thicker foam. So that's what's being tested now. And you can see here, this is some valve contamination. So you can see how the filtration is, is really required because this dust is extremely fine uh, and actually cause the valves to stick and, and jam up. And there's also a lot of very fine dust and, and this could also get into the patient's lungs. So it's, it's quite a challenge. Um, the electrical design, it's, um, designed to be really rugged and robust and, and possibly even a single sided PCB. So it could be locally manufactured or, or repaired quite easily. Um, and these use derated uh, Toshiba drivers. Uh, and these could be 12 or 24 volts uh, with some uh, shift registers. So these could actually be expanded um, to support uh, up to eight valves or even up to you know 250 valves if we would have a uh, a bank of valves um, so the next steps on this are, is really more testing uh, and building up simple uh, open source testing tools so one little device a prototype is a low cost pressure sensor so normally these are over a hundred dollars um, and this is um, you know maybe like thirty dollars uh, and we can get different pressures um, as we need to as well, you know, 100 PSI or 30 PSI, whatever uh, for the application, which all, could also be integrated into the final product uh, to give us, you know, uh, maintenance information and things like that if we're noticing higher than normal pressure drops. Um, so one of the, the biggest uh, milestone is really gonna be the gas quality testing and using tools like the Ventmon, uh, we can then, if we can then be sure that um, the gas quality is quite uh, quite reasonable, then we can look at things like gas chromatography and, and lab testing. Um, but we don't want to, you know, be be spending too much money on that right now, uh, which is why we're sort of developing some of these these uh, lower cost tooling. And then in the future, we'd be looking at product designing and and possibly a standalone model. Um, which would integrate a compressor uh, into the design. Um, so yeah, in, initially we, I did some user um, research and there's some need for, for larger flow rates um, for small clinics or, or even smaller flow rates for standalone models. So there's, there's quite a large scope um, for the end use and the um, scalability of the design is, is quite important feature so it's sort of up in the air at the moment as to what the final product would be um, but at the moment is the the goal is just to develop the the basic technologies that can be uh, repeated um, and, and built out into different end products okay well thank you okay thank you very much ben um let's hear it for ben uh, this really could be a life-saving invention if it um, turns out to be uh, deployable. And I, I'm using the word invention a little loosely here. Um, 
we try to focus on real inventions, but during the pandemic, we've, we've shifted a little bit. 